Hello and thank you for joining us on the midweek edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayo Dili Uzubakun. Today on the program, after nine years of trial, court jails a former member of House of Representatives, Farouk Lawan, seven years for $3 million bribe demand from Femi Otedola. NLC Kaduna State Government negotiation fails as labor threatens a fresh round of protests. Despite ECOWAS court ruling, federal government insists on licensing Twitter and other social media platforms in Nigeria. And later on the show, President Buhari appoints Buratai Olon Shaki as ambassadors to Benin and Cameroon. I'll be hanging out with Likon Shote and Sam Ibimiri. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. Delay indeed is not a denial. After nine years of trial, a former member of the House of Representatives, Farouk Lawal, was <clears throat> Lawal has been sentenced to seven years in prison by a high court in Abuja for receiving a $500,000 bribe. This was when Lawal was serving as the Hard Hoc Committee Chairman on Investigation Fraud of Fuel Subsidy in 20. 12. He took the bribe to remove Otedola's oil, companies, um, oil company from the list of firms indicted of fraud and in fuel subsidy regime. Let's take you back to that audio recording that sparked the controversy. Oh. I don't bring it to my house. Okay, you take it to your house? No, I don't bring it to my house. It's a lot of money. Uh, yes, so well, because I am rushing to be there at the airport now. Yeah, they are the airport in the aircraft. And before they can come over now, unless I send somebody to the airport, I was coming, I can't, by the time they come, I should be in the chambers. I have a lot of things to do myself. Is there anybody you trust I can give it to? Or, you, or maybe I should yeah. just, or maybe I should postpone my China to tomorrow? No, no, it's okay. I would arrange with someone. I would, uh, let me give you his number. Okay. Yeah. That was the conversation between Lawan and Otedola. So, Tuesday's sentencing of Lawan is a clear case of the will of justice migrating slowly but moves assuredly. Lawan was found guilty of a three count charge of corruption and bribery and will serve a jail term of seven years. Let's share the story with you. We presented a report. Farouk Lawan was a chairman of House Ad Hoc Committee on Petroleum Subsidy Regime in 2012. He was brought before Justice Angela Otaluka of the High Court of the Federal Capital Territory, seated in Apo, Abuja, by the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission on behalf of the federal government. The former lawmaker was a four term member of the House of Representatives who represented. Bagua Shanono Federal Constituency of Kano State between 1999 and 2015. He allegedly demanded a sum of $3 million for himself from the chairman of Zeno Petroleum and Gas Limited, Femi Otedola. He also allegedly collected $620,000 out of the amount with a view to removing Mr. Otedola's companies from the list of firms indicted by the Ad Hoc Committee for allegedly abusing the first subsidy regime in 2012. Prosecuting counsel Adeboiga Womolo in the course of the trial noted the bribe was demanded by Mr. Lawan. Trial Judge Justice Otaluka found the former representative guilty in the three count charge brought against him. She sentenced the convict to seven year term in prison on counts one and two of the charge and five years on count three. The judge also ordered the convict to make restitution of the sum of $500,000 
he collected from Mr. Tadela to the coffers of the federal government. It's very clear we are clearly dissatisfied with the judgment delivered by the court um, for very serious legal issues uh, and there is no doubt that we are appealing the judgment in, a, in every respect. We are going to the Court of Appeal and uh, we, there's the option constitutionally open to us and we are going to explore it to the fullest right away. The sentence of seven years and five years on the different count charge are to roll concurrently. Celestina Iria, TVC News, Abuja. Femi Atadala actually got a mark note from the SS, the SS guys. And then um, when the thing came up, when Lawas told him to go and bring $3 million, he played along and reported to the authority. So they gave him a mark note. And in Lawas' defense in court, Lawas was saying that he wanted to ascertain if Otedola would really bribe him so that mm. we expose Otedola to the public. That was his own defense. And he was meant to bring two other uh, defense to help his claim, but he couldn't produce them, which the judge actually pointed this out. It took seven years. I mean, it took nine years. But Lawa is in serious trouble now. Yes, he is, Ayo. And um, like we rightly noted, you know, um, at the beginning of the program, um, the wheel of justice grinds very slowly, mm. but it surely, you know, takes you to the point where justice, you know, is is delivered. Um, Lawan's case. Uh, they, they used to call him Mr. Integrity. I don't know if he still mm. has uh, that title. He was the head of, of the integrity, integrity movement, the yes. House of Representatives, yes. so former House Committee Chairman on Education. It, it, it's, it's so sad that Mr. Integrity himself, you know, uh, collapsed at the weight of evidence, overwhelming evidence. Mm. You know, for those of us who um, watch the legal space, you know, very closely, sometimes as laymen we ask ourselves, I mean, if we had overwhelming, com uh, overwhelming evidence, why did it drag, you know, um, uh, seven years mm. to, to get him, you know, to face justice? But that is neither here nor there. The, the fact of the matter is he has been found guilty, but that's not the end of the case. Um, his legal team says that they will they're appeal. They're not satisfied. Yeah, they're not satisfied, and they will appeal. And what that also means is that if he doesn't believe that he has, that he has received justice at the level of the appeal court, he will also probably, you know, proceed to the, to the Supreme Court. I would like to see how that plays out. But, you know, the entire saga reminds us of um, how corrupt, you know, our system is. You know, it's like opening, you know, a can of worms. You know, um, for those uh, who had forgotten anything about that, about that incident, between 2029 and 2020, no, 2009 and 2011, mm. you know, um, the first subsidy issue, you know, mm. reared its head, and it was, it was a matter of national discourse. In fact, the record says about $6.8 billion, yeah. you know, were, f were fraudulently, you know, siphoned from, mm. from the cover of this country. And um, it, it, it all boiled down to, to issue of abuse. You know, records not being kept straight. Mm. We were told at so that point in time, yeah, we were told at that point in time that about, yeah, that about 59 million liters of fuel were being consumed in Nigeria. Mm. Whereas indeed, records, you know, available records, the facts, you know, proved uh, that it wasn't indeed that about portfolio billionaires. Yes, yes that, just had people that about signing documents. Yeah, and 35 million liters dollars. were being consumed, but authorities, um, those who were very close to the NPC, were claiming um, 59 million liters, and the difference. You know, was by, mm. was being shared by those in the authority. But like I said, it's a long, it's mm. a long, it's a long case. Little shot you will hear of oversight functions. You will hear of House Committee Chairman on this, House Committee Chairman on that. And apologies to uh, uh, my friends in the National Assembly, but the truth of the matter is that we have a fair idea of what goes on when you say you are 
oversighting, even as at the state as um, assembly level mm -hmm. and everything we know now. So you were in charge of a panel to prove those people who were involved in the first uh, of the racket. And Xenon Oil at that time, according to Femi Otedola, was not even involved. But to say, to remove his name, you needed three million dollars. It shows the modus operandi of, I don't want to generalize, maybe the way it used to be. Well, uh, I will. Uh, that, that appears to be the way we run this country. The oversight committees, the members, what they generally do, which you are, I think, I hope, I thought you were going to be more explicit. They actually go, it's almost as if they go there with their own kind of not go, mm -hmm. so that uh, they don't really check anything. All they do is they expect that they are going to be entertained. And when I say entertain, they expect money to go with them, you know. Mm. And I think that is essentially what it's all about. You have dealers in the in government generally, not just the legislative arm. You also have dealers even in, ex a, in the executive branch, you know. So this doesn't really surprise me, and I'm sure you are not surprised. But I want to say something that uh, I thought our legal system in Nigeria says the onus to prove anybody guilty is on the prosecution, even to prove beyond reasonable doubt. Now, if we are reversing the Anglo-Saxon judicial system that we are using in Nigeria, and we are, it appears to me that we seem to want to be adopting the French, which says you are guilty until oh, you prove yourself oh, innocent. Oh, yeah. Whereas our system says you are innocent, innocent until, until you prove yourself guilty. guilty. And it is the onus is on the prosecution to prove beyond reasonable doubt. And then for the judge, I'm not a lawyer, for, for the judge to be telling um, Lawan that, well, it's your responsibility to provide your witness. Something tells me that something is wrong somewhere. There. I'm not a lawyer, but I, I, I'm not convinced. When Do you the get judge what is reading the judgment, yeah. most of the time, it talks about the pitfalls of your case. I understand that. that. Meant to produce I understand that, but for to now hook witnesses. your decision on that. If you don't I'm, produce I'm, your witness, I'm, 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 worried, I'm worried about that. If you say somebody who supports you in court, yes, and you didn't parade the people. You didn't bring if the you people say there are no witnesses, eh? there are no witnesses. Mm. I understand. It will affect your case. I it would have said, "Oh, you didn't prov provide your witness mm. and ended." It. But to now go beyond and begin to make it look as if he has the onus is on him. Ah, uh, Mr. Shadda, maybe I, think, I, think I covered judiciary for more than <laughs> eight years. Yeah, Sometimes I think, I think even the judge yeah. will go as far as <laughs> we got lampooning the lawyer you know, that prosecuted the case. You know, that look. <laughs> you know, did I, a shoddy job. I, there is a popular <laughs> saying that the law is an ass. You, mm. could, you could have a good case, fantastic case. If yeah. you argue it badly, you lose. Yes. So there are no sentiments. Yes. It's, a, it's about the judge the evidence, pointed out the evidence that before, you bungled this case. Yeah, the evidence before before the before the courts. But you see what what drives this entire issue home is: Have we learned any lessons? Mm. And my answer is is no. What has radically changed? When I spoke earlier, I talked about claims that about 59 million liters of fuel were being consumed daily, whereas mm. in actual fact, it was about 35. I just read up an article on my way here. And in April, the Nigerian government, through its agency, the NNPC, is claiming that 93 million liters have been consumed. It's, mm. it's, 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 it's impossible. And mm. the subsidy system, Ayo, has not been stopped. Mm. Do you understand? The petroleum equalization fund is still there. It's still a form of subsidy. People are reaping from it, and we are pretending. And Nigerians need to be reminded that the man who sits at top of the petroleum industry is Mr. President himself. There are lots of anomalies that we need to address. Mm. The, the, the minister under Jonathan, I don't know if that has changed, was a member of the board of NNPC. At the same time, she was presiding or supervising the PPPRA. Hmm. 
you are an insider. A powerful designer. Do you understand? So the entire system is still is still shackled. If you ask me, no transparency. The first time that NNPC accounts were ed, uh, audited by external auditors was after 40 years under the present uh, NNPC NNPC GMD. So there's a lot of opaqueness in the system. Nothing much has changed. The petroleum industry bill that we thought would have been, you know, enacted the problem is, is uh, this for 14 years on. And we've been made okay, all over the place. I have Larry. Larry is calling us from um, Ibadan, your state. Hello, how are you? Yes, thank you for joining us, Larry. Good. Um, thank you for having me. This I am seriously concerned about the judicial system in Nigeria. All right. I pray this one does not go like the case of the gov former governor of Abia State. In a case that has been on for the past, I think about nine years or more ago, what are we doing that we cannot dispense of all these things and let those culprits go to and serve whatever they are supposed to serve? That is the reason why corruption and the rest of them they are, they are having their way right in Nigeria. I hope now that this one has been done, we pray it to be given a speedy uh, action from the, from the appeal, appeal the to the Supreme Court because, you know, the case in Nigeria doesn't end with the first uh, level here. So I think a man who calls himself Mr. Integrity and is doing this, that is uh, uh, the whole system in the country. And on Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Larry, for your contribution. Larry was talking about, you know, if you have the wherewithal, you can proceed to the uh, well, Court of Appeal court, yes. and you can take it uh, to Supreme the Supreme court. court. Yes, that's true. Fine lawmaker, his contributions to the House of um, Representatives and everything. And um, it's so unfortunate that this will be a major dent in his career or um, maybe this can just be... It could ruin his entire life. Yes. Well... Um, if indeed, as the court seems to have found, that he was complicit, if he did took such an action, he must know that, you know, there is no there are consequences. Mm -hmm. I think it was uh, President Obama who says elections have consequences. Mm -hmm. This kind of actions also have consequences if you are caught. If you can't just do the time. Yes. You, you have to. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to do, exactly. You are correct. You know. So, I think he should do the time. You know, since he has done the crime. However, I also know that he has rights to still go to higher court until mm. the Supreme Court concludes finally. Hmm. All right. Ban last a minute intervention. Another round of protests by the Nigerian Labour Congress, NLC, is looming in Kaduna State. Negotiations between the state government and the NLC has collapsed and organized labor is threatening fresh industrial action to demand reinstatement of sacked workers in the northwest states. Malam Nasir Rufai, it was said that he uh, should first of all deal with the bogusness mm. of his government. Yes. And Madam Nasir Erufai went to, he took the challenge. Yes. And he has gone ahead to sack 90. 99. 99. Hmm? Yes, 99. 99. You're right, 99. Yes. Political appointees. Yes. That's, that's not a small figure. It is, it is not. In fact, if, if you convert that into a percentage, it comes to 30%. Hmm. That's what the report said. Sacked 99 30, political appointees. Because when you see, let's say, the governor, the deputy governor, the SSG, all the aides, chief of staff, 30 deputy chief of staff, SSE. The government says it, that figure represents 30% of the population of his political That aides. shows the determination yes, of so Nasir Erufai yes. in this fight. Yeah, he, he is. Ayo. And. Um, Beyond sentiments, because I have been and I'm still a manager of men and resources. Hmm. You see, there are times that you have to take very tough decisions. Okay? Except we want to pretend. The, the times indeed are no longer what used to be. Hmm. Nobody has money to throw around. 
I would agree with you and those who argue that this could be a if you listen to the way he, he speaks about this thing he's, he's so passionate about it that but you know he's not going to bend no but you know erfa is a technocrat and you also know him for the kind of person that he is and that's why i i speak to the issue of of sentiments beyond sentiments mm. there are certain tough decisions that have to be taken this is one of them if you don't have all the money to throw around, you're looking at your cost of governance. This is just as a and local says, government level. Yeah, and the man says, look, I'm not just looking at the, the bureaucracy. I'm also looking at my aides. And he has taken the very first decision. But want to be fair to him. The reports I also have read says that these are still intentions. He has not. The reports I read last Friday says he has not sacked the civil servants. No, no, what he has just yes. done, you know, yes. local government, this is in, yes. in stages. No, no, because... Local government, um, yes. yes. You know, lab, you know labor, mm. the way they operate. There is this feeling, and Nigerians need to have the right information. The general the report out there, unverified, claims that the man has sacked over 2,000, 4,000, you know, uh, civil servants. I said, no, but... We are taking steps. We are it asking ourselves questions. We are asking, yes. It's but, like so there, there is the one leg of it is talking about what to do in the absence of sufficient resources. The other one is about so that, another. He can go so ahead. So that and what will not stop me is that when you are telling me about my appointees. Yes. And just, but beyond that, Ayo, if he is going to act, he needs to act within the ambits of the law. Mm. There are there are labor laws mm. that stipulate what you want to do. When you have to treat workers as redundant, Nasser Rafa is complaining, and other state governments that look, government is not well, governance is not about paying salaries. That one percent of the state civil service, one percent, that they take ninety five percent of the state allocation and income, and by the time they pay salary for the month how you are going to do infrastructure for the rest of the states, how you are going to build hospitals, schools, and everything, it's your headache. But Libor is saying that, look, it is your responsibility, and you need to play it. Well, Labor may probably be coming from the traditional definition of government, as in government is expected to provide employment. I disagree with that um, philosophy. If there is no job to do. I don't need to hire you. So I need to hire you only if I need you. Mm. And I will make provisions to pay you. Now, how do you intend to run a state where by the time you have paid salaries, at the end of the month, you're going to have just a little over 100 million naira. What do you do with that? In terms of, just as you have hinted, infrastructure needs for or even to run the offices pay electricity bill do you understand fuel the cars schools schools buy um what do you call it um f run the, the schools buy med med medicines e equipment that the they need in the hospital disposal. all that where do you get the money for that i think it is time the nlc employs some mbas to help them sit down and think through things. Because you can't expect that you are going to uh, put your, and in any case, there's something that the governor has said. And this is not to say that I'm either supporting him, or the, but there are some arguments that he says, they are looking at people who have come with fake certificate. People who are looking at, who are using other people's certificates. People who are not even qualified for the positions that they are holding. We are going to first get rid of those people first. Now the Labour Congress now wants to come and sort of do some kind of checkmate and prevent him from, why don't we just sit down, analyze the things themselves? You know, uh, he, he, he transferred some people out of punitive, uh, you know, because they, uh, or they ran the, the, the strike against him. Well, I don't, such arguments uh, for this time, I don't think, uh, but I think okay. there's something, there's another angle that we need to look at. Look on, just hold your breath there. Oh, let's take this break or when we come back okay. we'll talk more we'll be right back after this break
It's a midweek edition of Journalist Standouts. We're reaching you from TVC News here in Lagos, and I have Sam Ibimiri and Lincoln Shorter still in the house. Before we took that break, Lincoln, you were explaining something. Yes, I said it's okay for, for us to be talking about how much money is coming in. All too often, our governors, all they do is just wait till the end of the month, collect this thin dole Jack. from Abuja, and then just decide on how to spend the money. I have not quite heard too many of them coming up with strategies to drive up their IGR. You know, if, as some of them claim, that the way Nigeria is set up is impoverishing both the states and the local governments, why don't they then get together and sit down with the president and say, we need to rework this country so that states can be richer, they can make more money, rather than agonizing every day over unpaid salaries of workers. Your job is not just to be paying salaries, just administering how money is shared. You also need to think of how you make the money. And I think a lot of our governors... Okay, I have Ibrahim calling us from Kaduna State. Good afternoon, Ozubakon. Thank you for joining us, Ibrahim. Thank you so much. And also, my greeting goes to your two guests over there. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Zim Ibrahim from Kaduna. Okay, please go ahead. The issue of Kaduna State on civil servants is real. That the Kaduna issue on civil servants is a peculiar matter. Why do I say so? You see, the state government, the state government of fight. Fight, okay, yes, it's a technocrat, as the way. But your second man there, the way he really come down, I was really satisfied. That is the one by my, in my right hand. That head man there, he has spoken well. You see, there are some certain foundations, all certain things put on ground before you come to power. You cannot just say, okay, you want to you know, downside your downside your whatever uh, technology you use to do so. No. With all due respect, our excellency is the right man in the state. He has done so well in terms of development. But certain civil servant is not an excuse. You cannot tell us that, yes, you are going to be at least of some certain percentage of your uh, land, at least monthly allocation is going for salary. Yes, it is the politician that keep on employing, employing and employing without creating another avenue. Like the way it comes out, you are helping up many ways of uh, revenue, which we are seeing the booming. But by coming on a certain and saying, yes, this is what you're going to do, and we start conducting NFP. It's not ideal because there are NLC not carry order. For you to do this, this is what you have to go. Because right here, there are some sex uh, staff who are using some sex results. Quite okay, right? That, 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 there is nothing there is nothing denied about that. But another thing is this day. Why a single person has almost going to a uh, political appointee going to 100? Imagine. Why on earth Nigeria, but what lies in Nigeria, our system that we are running this democracy is too bogus and it's too costly. Thank you. We need to cut down our Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me, Sam, let me use the model of um, the Ekiti State Governor, that's the Chairman of Governors Forum. I think at the point in time, he sat down with these workers and they had to break everything down that, oh, look, it's not possible. Yeah. Look at how much comes in. And the first thing he announced in that meeting is that he suspended the minimum wage for some yes. <laughs> kid of workers and everything. Yes. So that everybody will see if this is the IGR, this is how much we are generating, and this is how much comes from the federal government. Look at it at the end of the day. Look at what you are demanding for salary. Look at what I do for the... So, as in, everybody should be humble enough to have that kind of tit at tit with the uh, Nigerian Liberal Congress instead of declaring the president yeah, voted. I, I your brilliant expose. Two things. Communication, engagement. All right. When I spoke earlier, I talked about a clash of egos. Both parties have to come down from their high horses. They have to come down. Mm. They are not engaging enough, and they are not communicating enough. Now, it's worked for the people in the kitty because the, the stakeholders resolved to confront the facts. The fundamentals are that we don't have enough money coming into our post every month. So what should we do as leaders? That's the issue here, which is what you have just shared with us. In Kaduna, we all agree here 
if I, if I, if I heard my brother you know, very clearly, uh, Mr. Chute, the government does not have enough to trade, the, the, the state government does not have enough money to trade around. But how well has Erufai communicated that rather than adopt a strategy, strategy of confrontation? Because okay. if you remember, that's, that's if issue. you remember, even the, min, the, min, uh, the federal government waited in and they called the Nigerian Labour Congress to Abuja and they wanted Kaduna State government to send a representative. Ayo, Erufai Ayo, said no. Re remember at some point that even the Labour leaders who went out to legally protest were brutalized mm. by higher thugs who, who put those thugs on the street. You declared so, them wanted so, and you, yeah, you put a bounty. So <laughs> it, it, sounds, it, sounds, it sounds comical because these people were basically exercising their rights. So, mm. Erufai, I want to believe he understands what communication is and he understands what engagement is. We just need to shove the issue of uh, and go aside and, and do what is right. At, at the end of the day, going into that kind, the kind of harrowing strike they went to, the warning strike, yeah. Will not, you know, will not be the best for the states, as in shut down electricity, um, essential services, and everything. And labor now, I don't know what the next phase of this showdown will be. Well, you can, you, I mean, the handwriting is, uh, <laughs> is on the wall. They have shut down electricity in the state. And just as um, Sam um, has observed, we have a belligerent governor. It's not enough to try to impress people that you are a technocrat. Being a techno technocrat also includes your capacity to communicate and engage. It's okay for you to be able to uh, analyze and assess and say this is what we ought to be doing. Right. But you also have to have I think they call it emotional uh, intelligence. intelligence. Mm. You ought to be able to get across, explain your position to these people. And like I said earlier on, Maybe the labor union also need to hire MBAs, people who can sit down and help them understand figures, how these things work, mm. you know, rather than, yeah, yeah, honestly. rather than it's just a be fighting and, you know, the, the, creating the, chaos all over, I, uh, all, all over the place, mm. you know. All right, moving on now. The costs is still unclear over the restoration of operations of the microblogging site, Twitter. In Nigeria, this is despite a ruling by the ECOWAS courts in Abuja, which restrained the federal government from suspending or sanctioning Twitter or its um, uh, users in the country. The Minister of Information and Culture, Alaji Lai Mohamed, insisted for Twitter and other social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook to continue to operate in the country. They must register as a company, open offices, and employ Nigerians. From the face of it, when you look at the suspension and um, we submitted ourselves to the jurisdiction of ECOWAS courts. I don't know. Maybe it was because of the Juson strike that um, these people took that this case. I think it was Femi Falano. Yeah. Serap. Uh, Serap. Serap no, took the case to ECOWAS courts. Echo court. And... Um, we submitted ourselves to the jurisdiction, but we hardly obey judgments from this <laughs> court. I, you're the one saying government doesn't obey judgments. So. We hardly. I have <laughs> sample that took Don't mind me. That, <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind me. <laughs> you know, but, see, in law, they call it precedent. Yeah, we have precedent yeah, that shows um, that, look. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but you know law involves a lot of technicalities. Mm. Um, I think that what Serap and uh, 176 uh, other Nigerians did, I guess they belong, all members of civil society did was to um, force the hand of government not to act immediately. And you know, you, you can't just, um, you know, um, embark on, on, on a demonstration, trusting that things will work out in your favor. So they went, quickly went to court to preempt government and mm -hmm. got that judgment. But government has argued its case, you know, um, and they lost. So we expect that the Nigerian government, notorious as, it is, as, as they are, you know, uh, in terms of not obeying uh, uh, orders of the court, would behave differently in, the, in this matter. Um, we don't have any reason to, to, to conclude that they will act otherwise, because government, you know, uh, says they have set up, they picked, you know, an A-team to represent them in a conversation that we'll hold probably very soon with, with the team from Twitter. 
So we would like to see how that plays out. But even as we wait, we need, the government needs to understand that there is a business side to this, to this, um, to this face off. And I'd like to share you know, some important facts with you. Um, the report says that the cost of shutdown, a report by NetBlocks, okay, says the, the cost of shutdown per day is almost 100 million, 100 million naira. You know what that means. This, this platform had been shut down, and Nigerians have been forced not to use it 40 million in, in the last yeah, 40, in, in the last two, or two weeks or thereabout. So a lot is, is um, we are losing a lot in terms of the economic side of it. And that is why whatever government needs to do, we need to act very quickly mm -hmm. and, and, and deal with the matter. Because in support of the um, federal government of Nigeria, and um, the president set up a committee yeah. led by Minister of Information, Honorable uh, uh, Alaji Lai Mohamed. And in that committee, we have uh, the Minister of uh, Digital Economy and Communications there, right. that um, Issa Patani. In that same committee, we have uh, Papa Tunduraji Fashola, and he's there on the strength that he's a lawyer, a senior mm -hmm. advocate of Nigeria. We have Festus Kuyamo, a senior advocate of Nigeria, is a lawyer. And uh, we That's have the Minister of State for, yes, for, for Labor. Um, um, Labor. Yeah. And we have Geoffrey Oyema, the Minister of Foreign Affairs. And this will, and um, Abubakar Malami, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice. And this will definitely, w w when you look at the names. But right, almost all of them are lawyers. No, 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 as in the, <laughs> yes, the rationale. <laughs> you know? But some Nigerians, again, they've gone ahead to bring that, oh, these are. Uh, they're not too techie people. That Twitter might just want to bring people from their own committee of um, young men and women that are <laughs> savvy in terms no, of. I think, I think th those are the top of the deck. Mm. The information, the communication that I read says, in addition to other people, mm. meaning that um, resource people that they would need, mm. you know. So they've will, done well with this committee. Will, will be drafted, yes. Okay. You know, because. We are looking at external affairs, so you have somebody there. Mm. Uh, we are looking them. at uh, information and culture. Yes, sir. Like my has been the vanguard of this. And then, of course, this is new, new tech, new econo economy, mm. so we are doing it. Pasami is there, mm. you know. And, um, well, maybe people might say, well, okay, this generates employment, so you have the Minister of State for... No, it's also a senior African... Yeah, yeah. I'm, saying, I'm just trying to look at the portfolios okay. of this pers this, these individuals. Now, I haven't said this. Uh, I'm going to say something that I think it's time for these online platforms to start having street addresses in Nigeria. Um, federal government a huge junk, chunk of his revenue is company income tax. And if these organizations are not quite registered in Nigeria, that's a big omission, I think. So I, without prejudice to Twitter or WhatsApp or anybody, I just think that anybody who is going to register, operate in one way or the other in Nigeria ought to be properly registered with the CAC. Mm -hmm. And then there should be, you get your name and then we have to find a way to remit your tax to the board so of inland. Yes. yes, you know. And then if you have to have a street address, the presence, meaning that you will have to have a physical address on ground here. I don't think I, think, I don't think it's too much to ask for. And the federal government went ahead. After all, in their countries where they are, they have street addresses. Hmm. The federal government is very concerned that any company any micro blogging site that want to undermine democracy that's the way they are looking at it that look they are going to be they, are, they will make sure that they proscribe that company res irrespective of the uh the rights that we're talking about our freedom of the press that this is national security and when it comes to national security every other right take the back seat yes um but let me, let me just quickly correct an error when I, you know, that uh, error of facts. When I talked about 100 million naira, it's what we are losing per hour. So I need to correct that. Not per, per hour? Yeah, per hour. So I need to correct that. Hmm. I, I would agree with you that no country will submit itself to anarchy. It's not done anywhere. Every sovereign nation has a right to run its 
its its entity, okay, in a way that people are safe, all right, and uh, citizens make progress within the confines, you know, within the confines of the law. So here yeah, uh, we appreciate government concerns that it shouldn't, you know, subject itself to um, uh, corporate, corporate organizations that have almost become like uh, multinationals operating beyond op operating beyond their borders you you we're not running a system i mean where you could just walk in do whatever you like and walk away so i would i would agree that some form of um relationship needs, yeah need to need to be defined clearly but there is this other side of the concern and it's a major concern for me even as a media practitioner that the government is acting acting out of panic, is jittery. I have argued that in the past, and I want to maintain that position. I think that the government had all the time in the world well, to strike to strike a relationship. We are, we, we, we are under regulation. This like TVC now. Yes. We are under NBC. We can step out of the so line. You, so you, <laughs> that so sector you, is heavily regulated. So you wonder why the government wants to continue to tweak the law that sets up. I mean, that sets up a. Uh, uh, but, so, but social media, can't the social media be regulated? You, you see, I, uh, in Canada, there's a I, move like I that have, ongoing I, now. I have argued here that no country would want to subject itself to a reign of anarchy. I, yeah. I mean, that, I need uh, to make myself Sam, clear yeah, in that, in that regard. Sam, I, I, need, I want to, sorry, I'm yes. sorry to, I just want to okay. add this, that, you see, by the time the DSO, the digital switchover, yes. fully takes over, TV stations will be vacating a lot of their frequencies. Okay. Mm. And it's, going to, be, and it's going to be taken over mm. by telecoms that service these Twitters, this uh, WhatsApp, and the rest of them. You see, we cannot just leave that without some kind of, uh, how do you put it? Regulation. Some, some kind of regulation. Yeah. And also, to like I said, I need to add that there must be we must be able to make some money out of that i i think it's an I, asset no no mm -hmm. I, I totally agree with you okay i totally agree with you but what we're also saying is that do we trust this government not to take on the advantage of what he wants to do mm -hmm. okay to create some kind of undeserving I, I understand for you. people to to we have to move to some I understand news you. and share news criticizing the government sh should not be seen as Undermining <laughs> yeah, national security. <laughs> yeah, national security. So it's a mixed bag. Ayo, that's it. <laughs> it's not. Some people should not say, "Oh, because somebody is saying that." Oh, President Worry, you've not done well. That should not in any way endanger national security. Right. But we we'll move. It's an ongoing discussion, and um, we will we'll stay on it till the end of this crisis between the federal government and Twitter. And finally, despite widespread criticism from Nigerians on the performance of the former service chiefs in tackling insecurity in the country, President Muhammad Buhari in February nominated three of them as ambassadors. After their resignation, hmm, okay, on Tuesday, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Jeffrey Oyema, announced the deployment of former chief of former Chief of Army Staff, retired Lieutenant General Tuko Brate as Ambassador to Benin Republic, and former Chief of Defense Staff, retired General Gabriel Olon Shaki as Head of Nigerian Mission to Cameroon. Juicy or not juicy? <laughs> Prestigious. I don't, I don't know. High or low? I don't. <laughs> the former Chief of Army Staff after serving in that office for 66 months. <laughs> a lot of courses <laughs> in the Nigerian Defense Academy, <laughs> you know, lost out in producing <laughs> the chief of army staff and Burate sat down for 66 months and then the federal government saw that, okay, did they resign? Because the story is talking about resignation. Or it was Mr. President that said, look, okay, enough is enough. Don't worry. I'll look for something for you. I'll give you guys soft landing so that Nigerians will not yeah. see as if you've not done anything. You've really worked hard and you've really done a lot of things for the country in the last 66 months. When they are quarreling among themselves, what mm. kind of work, hard work is that? <laughs> Working hard is that? <laughs> okay, so I... First, I, I want to um, state 
in the light of what I've heard, you know, people are asking questions as to why Mr. President did what he did. I think we should not begrudge Mr. President because it's well within his rights. He rise. has the prerogative. Yeah, yeah, it's well within his rights to do what he did. Um, but even at that, Nigerians are recent issues. All of us are privy to what, you know, played out leading up to uh, <laughs> the resignation or, in quotes, the sack of, of, the, uh, of the former uh, service um, chiefs. Um, there, was a, there was a huge clamor across the length and breadth of this country. National including, Assembly, including, everybody. Including National Assembly. So it was clear that uh, Nigerians were, were tired and they wanted yes. them out. But you asked me, why did Mr. President quickly concede okay, to granting these officers? They've done their best, no doubt about it. I mean, when you sign up to, to the military, you're saying, I'm ready to die for my country. So we acknowledge that they've, they've, they've paid, I mean, they've paid their dues and all that, and we appreciate all their contributions. But the critical question to ask is, there were issues raised concerning the way they managed their tenure. Hmm. Permit me, Ayo, to remind us, um, may you still rest in peace, the, the Atahiru. late Atahiru, who, hmm. when well, he was asked about the way the money, money you know, um, budgeted for, for the military was expended, he said, look, you go ask those people. And you, you, Nigerians, are, Nigerians are asking questions. Why were these officers, retired officers, not asked to account for the period that they managed the Nigerian military? Huge sums of money were budgeted and expended. And then what Mr. President did was to quickly grant them self self line. But well, you are not Mr. Mr. President. To Mr. President employed them. Yes. And don't you think, Mr. President, we have this information? Oh, we should hold our leader accountable. And for Mr. President Nigeria, to look at it and Nigeria. say, look, these yes. guys have done well, in his own estimation, okay. that, look, instead of me bringing you you know, <laughs> to face the wrath of law or bringing you to account, that, look, I must promote you guys. You I, continue to serve Nigeria. I, uh, there's something we must appreciate. Nigerians are very discerning, and the discerning minds are asking questions. Do you have more information? The information I have is before the public, Ayo. Okay. Questions okay. are being asked about how money was spent, mm -hmm. was spent mm -hmm. and nobody is providing answers. I'll come back and to what you. we had mm -hmm. is that they have been given a uh, ambassador appointment and, and been assigned to leave the country. What do, you, what do you make of this? I think I was on this program the day it was announced some, well, after they, re, they left that they will be becoming ambassadors. And I suggested that, if it is true, they should send them to Syria. <laughs> some of them should go to Niger Republic. They should go to Libya, those tough areas. Mm -hmm. Because you need to let them know that they did not do well. In terms of, well, Atahiru pretty much you know, said some things without saying a lot. If you think, exactly if you want to ask questions about how money, well, these guys are still alive, go and call them. And I, I'm surprised that the House has also not thought it necessary to invite the them case. and say, please, how did you, because they mismanage. I don't think the, they have um, immunity as um, ambassadors. No, they don't. They don't. They, they, they don't. don't. Not, yeah. So they should be able to call them and find out, excuse me, how did you manage both operations as well as finances, mm -hmm. you know. And um, f for the president to go ahead and then nominate them. Anyway, those are not fantastic um, persons no, no, anyway. Chiefs. But I would have thought that he should send them to, like, Cameroon is okay. Um, on the day, on the day they were pulling them out. Or something. Yeah. On the day they were pulling them out from the military, one of the service chiefs was quoted as saying that, wow, you needed that rest. Yes. To take this deserved rest. So the rest now, are Now, the ambassadors so, yes. now. In Togo and uh, no, Benin Republic. Benin Republic. And so, in other um, words, Mr. Mr. President hearkened to his plea to grant him some rest, and that rest came by way of uh, ambassadorial ap appointment. That's right. Okay. So, but Ayo, speaking speaking seriously, um, all of us know that even within the foreign missions, you have people that are uh, uh, tagged atta military attaches and all that. And I guess, seriously speaking, that the reason Mr. One of the reasons Mr. President may have opted that they should go to Benin and, uh, and Cameroon is because these are our neighbors and uh, we know the security challenges that we face. But even at that, not many Nigerians will be impressed by the fact that these officers have not been made to account for their time in office. 
And we are not asking for that. We are asking because the issue came up at the National Assembly. Exactly. Why, why are the lawmakers who and are there representing no satisfactory not answer, responses? Matter? That's the issue. Atahiru did not give specifics. He only said, please who call these people. Them? These people are alive. So call them. What is, so why is the National to, Assembly who, who afraid wants, to call them? Who wants to sweep this era beyond the carpet? Who wants to? Don't you think, Mr. President, we have... A lot of money was budgeted. Hmm. So, I, I mean, I, we put him there. So, Mr. President should be accountable to Nigerians. And we're asking that he should account. Well, we have to leave it there, gentlemen. We have to leave it there. Look on shorter. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you. Ayo. Thank you. And uh, Sam, I want to say kulu kulu temper. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can watch the repeat broadcast tonight at 11. And don't forget, journalists hang out on Sunday, 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m., two hours of bumper pack on Sunday. Every Sunday we're here. We're not going to be on a terrestrial platform, but uh, um, DSTV, GoTV, 418, and um, what do you call it? Um, Sky Time? Okay. Go to DSTV 418, go TV 45, and our other platforms across. And we're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodele Uzubakun saying bye for now and God bless Nigeria.